Hi, I'm Brian Lindo, founder of Timeless Training, and today I wanna to share with you one of the most helpful distinctions I've ever learned. But before I do, I wanna ask you, have you ever wanted to be happier? Have you ever found that you got what you wanted, but you didn't want what you got? Or have you ever found that you got something that you didn't want, but later found that it was the exact thing you needed to truly be happy? Well, this can be quite frustrating, right? We want more happiness, we want to experience greater happiness, but what we want doesn't give it to us, and what we don't want seems to provide it. We, we can get pretty confused and it can be pretty hard to determine how to be happy and how to stay happy. So I wanna share this distinction that will help you better manage, direct, and even command your happiness so that you can have it more frequently and more long-term, right? And I call this concept the heads and tails of happiness. Now, we're not gonna get into every detail, but I'd like to share with you some simple concepts about this heads and tails of happiness. Now, the reason why I call it heads and tails of happiness is because happiness is a lot like a coin, right? It has two sides to it. Now, each side is connected to the other, right? They both play a role in the happiness you feel, but they are two different sides to the coin. Let me explain. So, the first side to happiness <clears throat> is what I call situational happiness, right? So this simply means, does your circumstance meet your expectations? right? Or not, right? Does it meet or not meet your expectations? Or in other words, do you get what you want, right? Does your reality match your mentality or not? Now, the other type of happiness is what I call satisfaction happiness. And we'll get to that more in a moment. But between situational and satisfaction happiness, you can largely determine your happiness, right? So let's get into this. Situational happiness is, does the circumstance meet your expectations or not? Now, if you're a parent, this will ring true for you. You have certain expectations of how your children will behave. Let's say you go into the grocery store and you expect your children to behave well, at least be happy or kind and, and, and not pull things off the shelves, etc. And let's say you're going down the aisle, aisle four, and there are a bunch of cans, and all of a sudden you find out your four-year-old is knocking cans down as you go, and it's creating a mess behind you. And as you turn around, one of those cans then knocks your two-year-old who's in the cart on the head, and he starts to scream, and everything is turning out differently than you had hoped, anticipated, or expected, and you will feel a large dose of discomfort, right? If, if that's how it goes. On the other hand, let's say you're at home and you just got dumped by your girlfriend and you think, oh, life is awful, I hate this, I'm so sad, and you go to get a large tub of chocolate ice cream, right? The typical, the typical pick-me-up food. So you go grab a whole tub. When you get to the store, you think, I'm gonna get this tub, it better be the chocolatey, chocolatiest tub I can ever find. And you walk in and sure enough, it's sitting on the shelf right where you expected it to be. And not only that, it's slightly on sale. You get a powerful kick of happiness because things turned out the way you expected. Now, on the flip side, you take that tub of ice cream home and you eat the whole thing. You hit the bottom of a five gallon barrel of ice cream and you will be violating the second type of happiness is the second side of happiness and that is satisfaction happiness is how you meet your what I call heart hungers okay so your heart hungers unlike your physical hungers are spiritual or emotional in nature so the heart hungers would include things like the, the desire or the, the, the yearning or the drive to progress, the drive to be loved, the need to feel understood or significant, the need for security or that, that drive to transcend who you are, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there are 10 basic heart hungers that I've identified that I think are the most important to focus on, but today just that small sampling is, is worth it. 
So it's good enough. So in situational versus satisfaction happiness, let's go back to the chocolate ice cream example. So in this, on this side of the coin, right, you get the ice cream exactly the kind you wanted at a discount, you're happy. You got what you wanted. Then you go home and you eat the whole thing and it violates your need to progress in your health goals or it violates your need to feel comfortable or it violates your need to, to be your best self and you were hoping you'd be better and not eat that much and you get the idea, you'll start to feel dissatisfaction on this side of the coin. And that's how some of these experiences that we think are gonna bring us happiness can be so dissatisfying or so bittersweet, right? We get that kick of, oh, that was great. And then we think, but it ugh, didn't turn out so good, right? Or your grandma may bring you a nice sweater for Christmas and you think, oh, it's not what I wanted. And it's awful, right? You feel this dissatisfaction at having gotten this sweater. But then later you find out that the girl you like at school or the guy you like at school likes the sweater. And all of a sudden it's meeting these needs and you want what you got. So you have to watch these two sides of happiness. They play back and forth and largely to kind of influence each other as you go throughout your day, right? In fact, they're at play all the time. And since we as human beings are driven by, we're pushed by pain and pulled by pleasure and we want to find that comfort zone where it meets our needs and we feel good, we will largely react to things that set off this balance of happiness. If, it, if things around us make us happier, we are naturally drawn toward them. If things make us not so happy, if they violate that happiness, right, we're naturally repelled from them. So this interplay is there all the time. Now here's what's interesting. Situational happiness is in your control because all you have to do is adjust your expectations, right? That mom in the store whose kids are knocking cans over, she can either get really upset because she still expects her kids to toe the line and be good, or she can adjust her expectations and say something like, kids will be kids, it's okay, and work it out, and she will feel less discomfort and more general happiness because she's adjusted her, her um, expectations than if she holds to them. Now, I'm not saying that she should or should not adjust expectations. Just because you feel discomfort doesn't mean you should, but it is something that was, is within your control. So if you're the person who says, I expect to have a million dollars in the bank or I won't be happy, guess what? Unless you're a millionaire, you will be miserable. There will always be something eating at you, gnawing at you, upsetting you, and you may not even remember. But if you expect that you have to have a million dollars to be happy, that will largely determine what you're seeking after and how much happiness you experience throughout the day. On the other hand, if your expectation is, well, or your assumption is, well, if I'm above ground, if I'm alive, then I'm happy, then guess what? Every day you wake up, your eyes open, and you're still kicking, you're having a great day. And I'm sure you know people who have mastered this side of happiness right? They've found a way to set their expectations so that they are happy and still functional. You have to have some high expectations in your life to reach higher goals. And that dissatisfaction can be healthy when leading you to do better. But you've got to keep it in balance, right? You've got to keep it in balance and in realistic check. Satisfaction happiness, just like us meeting our physical hungers, our physical needs, follows rules. If you don't have certain nutrients in your body, certain vitamins and, and, and nourishment, etc., you will die, whether you like it or not. You can't just change your expectations on that side and, and suddenly be okay, right? Just like a kid who might want to eat lollipops and, and popsicles their whole life, they can't do that very long without having serious problems because their, their system follows rules. So your soul, your spirit, your, your emotions follow rules as well. And you need to find the best ways to meet those needs so that you can feel satisfied on that side of things as well. And if you can start to master these two sides, you can largely determine your happiness every moment of every day. So I won't go into everything you could possibly do to fix this. You probably already know uh, some 
Uh, and you probably know people who you could mimic to master both sides of these. I'd like to just give you three takeaways that you could start to put into practice and see what comes of it. First, I would love for you to be a bit more present with your emotions, a bit more present with your happiness, and keep track of it, right? Be more aware of what makes you happy and what upsets you. Even keep a record, right? In your journal, in your phone, somehow keep a list and start to kind of get to know yourself and what's tipping your happiness off and what's keeping it on. And then start to see where it fits and what you might do with it. The second uh, takeaway is simply to set better expectations, right? As you start to realize what works and what doesn't for you, what makes you happier, what makes you worse, then you start to, you, you need to start to figure out, okay, well, is this one of those moments where my expectations are making me unhappy? And if they are, then you need to at least challenge them and say, okay, is this expectation or this belief healthy, balanced, good? Is it going to last long term? Is it going to help me have the best results in the long run? And if the answer is no, then adjust it. Pick a different belief and start to, to use it and start to follow it, right, as like a new mantra or a new, new guidepost so that you can have different expectations. And so as you run into the circumstances of your life, you can experience happiness on a, on a more continual basis. Um, and then the third takeaway is find better sources of happiness, right? There, there are many things that, that can bring you satisfaction for the short term, right? Many things that can bring your satisfaction for, for the time period you're focused on, right? Maybe yelling at your spouse will get you the satisfaction of feeling important, right? You'll feel, ooh, I'm important, aha, and you'll feel this burning satisfaction but you will have violated your need to connect, your desire for love, maybe even your feeling of security, and you've definitely done some, some harm on their side as well. And so in the end, you may actually end up with less satisfaction than when you started. Even though there's an instant kick, it might come low. So do things like give more love, work on things that are of value, work on things that, that really benefit people around you, work on on building up your own value, speak more kindly to yourself, hang around better friends, those types of things will start to lead to greater satisfaction on this level. Now, simply put, if you want to understand more, go on over to brianlindo.com. I put together a basic training package, uh, a course, a couple of courses for you to take that you can really dive into these concepts and, and so much more to really get to know yourself and master your happiness, master your clarity, master your drive, master all these things that will help you live a better life and be your best. So if, if this has resonated with you, I hope to see some comments down below, hope to hear what helped and what didn't, what questions you have, what I might be able to put into a later video. Um, and if you check that out, I can't wait to see you in the full, full course. So dive on over there and as always, every day, in every way, bring out your best.